Tonight, police warns against throwing water at vehicles and pedestrians. Transport Ministry refutes claims of vessel overloading. And one month later and still no proceeds donated from sale of Gods of Sport calendars. Good evening. Police are urging young people to act responsibly following complaints that water balloons and water from buckets have been thrown at vehicles and pedestrians. Assistant Commissioner of Police Rusiate Tunravu says that they aren't against young people having fun, especially as we celebrate the new year, but throwing water at people or moving vehicles is illegal. Beating drums and throwing water at people has always been part of the New Year tradition here in Fiji. But police say that while in the right place and at the right time this activity can be fun, children need to know the real and obvious dangers associated with throwing water at moving vehicles. Well, in the last 24 we've recorded uh, one, uh, one of the bus drivers um, was thrown at, at the plastic of uh, water. That's the only one that we have received. But uh, we have noted that uh, there's a lot of... Uh, our children around, as well as in the village and on the roads, eh, that are um, throwing water around uh, in this uh, festive uh, season. Police say they will not allow this to continue unchecked, especially when throwing water at vehicles and pedestrians can cause injury. The throwing of water is uh, not permitted. Uh, you can be arrested uh, for that. That is an offense eh, uh, for us to throw water at other person or throw water at a bus or the bus drivers, eh? uh, that is an offense and it's not allowed. But uh, beating drums and all these things can be allowed, but you don't have to come into the, the main road. But for now, the beating of drums will continue as all Fijians celebrate the new year, which police say must be done responsibly. We respect uh, how they enjoy their, their new year, but uh, we're just emphasizing on trust to be cautious. Eh? Because most of these uh, things that we do, when we do not control it, uh, it uh, leads up to other offences that have been committed and also people are being uh, uh, resulted in uh, injuries to them. Parents have also been urged to keep an eye out for their children during the school holidays and as the New Year celebrations continue. Myron Williams, Fiji One News. The Ministry of Transport has admitted that they've received complaints of overloading on ferries and ships that service the Maritime Islands. The Ministry, however, says that these complaints are unsubstantiated and that the vessels are loaded well within their capacity, adding that authorities closely monitor the loading of seafaring vessels. With numerous complaints made to the media on the overcrowding of ferries and ships recently, the Transport Ministry says they too have received similar complaints but add that these are all well within the capacity of these vessels. Uh, we've had reports that have come in eh, uh, from individuals that uh, have highlighted their concerns, uh, but uh, we need yet to have substantiated eh, whether there was indeed overcrowding or what next. It's the time of the year where many travel between urban areas and maritime villages and quite a bit of overcrowding could be experienced on board. Commander Francis Keen, however, says that they have officials of the Maritime Safety Authority who monitor the loading of each vessel and all ships have been complying with regulations. I haven't received anything yet from uh, the Maritime Safety Authority, a eh? uh, statutory body that comes under the ministry uh, on uh, any vessel that has been stopped uh, from sailing due to overcrowding. Commander Keane adds that all maritime officers have been tasked to ensure that seafaring vessels comply with regulations and if found in breach will have to face the penalties. We believe that the Maritime Safety Authority enforcement officers on our wharves and jetties around Fiji uh, are doing their job uh, in ensuring that uh, the ships that serve uh, our maritime islands actually meet uh, the obligations uh, in relation to the number of passengers that they are allowed to carry on uh, board them ships. And uh, this has been stressed to all uh, the Maritime Safety Authority enforcement officers to ensure that there's compliance on our jetties and that there's compliance by ship operators when it comes to numbers on uh, the ferries and uh, the relevant uh, passenger carrying uh, cargo ships. 
Myron Williams, Fiji One News. One month after its launch, international photographer Pedro Virgil's calendar, Gods of Sport, hasn't been very successful. The proceeds of the sales of the calendars were supposed to have been donated to the Loloma Home Orphanage last month, but just less than half has been sold to date. And Pedro Virgil is out of the country. International photographer Pedro Virgil launched his Gods of Sport Fiji calendar earlier last month with the hope of helping the Loloma home. The project had earlier on attracted controversy after the intended recipients of the charity, Homes of Hope, refused to be part of it. Now the calendar is facing other challenges with its core purpose. We had hoped that we'd be able to sell as many calendars as we could to be able to give a donation just prior to Christmas as, a, as kind of a pre-Christmas gift for the home. While Pedro Virgil is out of the country, Dama says they have managed to raise about $5,000 so far and will continue with the sale of the calendars. It's a first for its kind in Fiji and uh, I mean we, we're just uh, positive that as we go along we'd be able to, to make a, a donation by the end of January when we complete the sales. All funds from the sales is expected to go towards upgrading the services at the Nendi orphanage. Yes, we'd like to urge uh, the public to just to support Loloma Home. Uh, it's a home for, for women, single mothers with children. The home has about 27 children, seven of whom are orphans. 20 of those children are divided up amongst about eight mums. With a thousand copies published, the project is expected to raise around $20,000. Pratish Raj, Fiji One News. Cancer patients will be able to receive treatment right here in the country in the not too distant future. An advance party from the International Atomic Energy Commission will be here in the country in March to assist in the establishment of a cancer hospital. The health ministry has been planning to set up a basic cancer unit for some time now and hopes that everything goes well with the commission. whether it would be at CWM or whether it would be at Tamavua and the size and what sort of support they will provide us along with our uh, international uh, donor supporters or international partners to be able to address the issue of cancer in women, breast cancer which is going up and uh, cancer of the cervix. The ministry is also hoping to set up a radio oncology unit at the CWM hospital. Dr. Sharma says with high prevalence rates of cervical cancer, there's a need for people to change their lifestyle. Plans are also afoot to set up a liquid cytology method of cancer screening in the country. Which will double our uh, capacity. So this is being installed and under training is being undertaken at present. We have facilities like a little trip tuck coming up. In the news ahead, Jet Set Town residents donate blood to save lives. The Ministry of Women has undertaken the most far-reaching government project to date. This was the distribution of sewing machines to every village in Fiji and settlements in urban areas to be used by all women who reside in these areas. And this year the ministry hopes to reach the grassroots level again, but this time by providing cooking stoves for rural women. The ministry is working in partnership with the Secretariat of the Pacific Community to purchase 1,500 cooking stoves to begin with. That will that are very efficient and effective and will use less firewood and less smoke and will be more healthy for women. $100,000 has been allocated for this project. Stoves will then be provided to rural women at a subsidized cost. We will really look at the, uh, the most rural of villages where the open fire cooking you know, continues and where we see that the women are really uh, suffering uh, from the, uh, the impact of this open fire cooking. We'll start with them uh, and then we'll move uh, forward from there. Reforms within the public service are meant to improve productivity, efficiency and the better management of resources. It's not all about downsizing or cost cutting, but to ensure that all ministries are well equipped with the resources, says the Permanent Secretary of the Public Service Commission, Parmesh Chand. Some areas are increases being given, whereas in other areas uh, we have seen a reallocation of resources to higher priority areas. 
Chand says the reforms within the civil service will continue to progress to meet people's expectations and improve their overall service delivery. It's meant to ensure that we get value for money, uh, we, we get uh, the returns uh, on our investment, and that people uh, of Fiji uh, who are the uh, beneficiaries, uh, as well as the industry sector and, and the investors, are provided the service they need. Hundreds of lives in Fiji are saved each year by a single selfless act, donating blood. In fact, just one pint of blood can help save up to three lives. In Nandi yesterday, many took the opportunity to donate blood to help those in need in our hospitals. Blood donation is one of the ongoing activities of the Satya Sai organization, and they say that someday someone very close to you or even you might be in need of blood. Many blood donors say they say they do not hesitate when there is a blood drive in their neighborhood. Need it. In desperate times, uh, if people need it, if it's in the bank, then it's appreciative that they can use it. I feel that awareness needs to be done, then only they can um, do that. Awareness, through awareness, we can have uh, blood in the blood bank. Satya Sai organizations say they usually collect around 40 pints of blood each time they organize a blood drive, but this has been steadily declining. They say that younger people need to start making a habit of donating blood and help save lives. This blood donation is one of our regular activity because we like to support the hospitals in collecting the blood because there has been always a shortage of blood in the hospitals. And uh, this year I am expecting uh, all the centres in Fiji to actively take part in uh, trying to help the hospitals to collect blood. Turning overseas now and the high times in Colorado continue as recreational marijuana hit shelves for the first time in US history a few days ago. Marijuana stores are off to a smoking start and the pot business is in the state, in the state rather, is already booming. CNN's Jeannie Moose visits Colorado to see what it's like to walk into a marijuana store and buy pot legally for the first time. It's like going to the deli. I'll help who's next. But instead of half a pound of ham, it's an eighth of an ounce of pot. Each type described lovingly. It's a euphoric high. Customers seemed euphoric even before smoking. Though a few online hid from the cameras, all you have to do is show ID to prove you're over 21, then pay cash, 55 bucks or so with tax, for an eighth of an ounce that makes five to seven joints. You got a really nice fruity, juicy fruit. Tastes very much like it smells. Customers were doing a lot of smelling, sniffing the bouquet as if it were a fine wine or a pungent cheese. That's an Afghani blend, really nice bud structure on there. Appreciating bud structure rather than ordering a bud, weed has gone mainstream. The Denver Pot, I mean the Denver Post, even reviews pot. The paper has gone to pot with a website called The Cannabis and a marijuana editor who appeared on the Colbert Report. Are you high oh, yeah, right now? Job. Are you high Drives. right now? You're not high now, but do you smoke pot at all? I don't smoke pot. I do eat it, though. <laughs> oh, OK. Oh. On the cannabis, you can use a handy map to find a pot store near you or learn about cooking with cannabis. The site has two reviewers who try strains like Granddaddy Purple and tell you how zonked you'll get. Initially, the granddaddy gave me a nice uptick of energy that had me pondering a walk with our Sheltie. I could string together the concepts, like socks, before shoes, but by the time I made it to the shoes, where had the socks gone? Now that it's legal, everyone's playing name that pot. Could you hand me a green crack eight, please? And this is strawberry diesel. Great flavor, good energy. Sour alien, it's a cross of sour diesel and alien technologies. Even reporters can pronounce golden goat, but some of these names can get your goat. Baba Kush. Is it Baba Kush or Baba Kush? Baba Kush. There's the experts. But if you're really nice to the clerks, I smell this Tahoe Triangle. Maybe they'll sing it to you. Tahoe, Tahoe. It's off to smoke we go. Coming up in sport, Colony Sauer's warning ahead of the Fiji 7's two weeks camp. And Australia closes in on a 5-0 Ashes series sweep.